Awesome. Boswa, welcome. What's happening, my man? Second man on the show. <laughs> Should have been first. Uh, well, I apologize. Yeah, you know what happens to the fest mouse that goes know. on the trap? What? Yeah. So, um, first, first, first mouse that goes on the trap yeah. gets eaten by the trap. All right, but the second mouse gets the cheese. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so you're, you're always after the cheese. That's a good analogy. Yeah. Correct <laughs> stuff. Oh, okay. So, um, born and raised in South, um, Zimbabwe. Um, then come over here, successful business owner, SEO expert, um, part-time model I see sometimes, and, um, and proud father. That's, that's how I'd sum up, sum up you. But, but to everyone that doesn't know you out there and, and who are new, we prosper. Yeah, tell me a bit about yourself or you, you know, where you're from and your, and your story. Tim, thank you so much. And I really appreciate the uh, platform that you've got going on for yourself here. So, yes, you are right. Um, there's many skins to this onion. Um, but <clears throat> what I'm really proud of is the last bit that you said that I'm a proud father. Right. So, yes, I was born and bred uh, in Zimbabwe and I've been in Australia for the past seven years. And in the seven years I've been here, four of which I've been married and been a dad oh, wow. um, and also started my business. So if you would have met me at some time <laughs> on the same day, I would have been a husband, a dad and uh, starting my business. You started your business on that same day. <laughs> Not exactly Not on the exactly same day, day but, same but it was the same period. time period. So wow. yeah, so everything just sort of blew up on its own yeah. and um yeah now we're here it's all exciting but um like i got saying i've, I've uh, come from zimbabwe um you know things were not really working out for us back home in zimbabwe but um yeah i've created yeah. you know something that i'm proud of and okay. thank you for honoring that yeah 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 <laughs> well, i want to dig a little bit deeper onto that psychology and we've talked about it before a little bit you coming from an area like zimbabwe and giving you perspective and, and drive and ambition. And, and I see it in, in my partner at the moment. Um, she's from South Africa, but you have this drive that a lot of people don't. And, and do you think you put that down to your upbringing or, or, and, and your perspective? What, what do you think in, in that sense? Absolutely. Um, so we, we live in a world of entitlement. Mm -hmm. You know, when, you brought, when you've been brought up with everything that you want you never know what it feels to not have mm -hmm. and if you've been brought up in a place where you don't have you do the best to actually have things mm -hmm. all right um i'll give you context like you say as to the scenario when when, when i was coming in from zimbabwe we have we had had a president for the last 34 years and it was only the one guy. So he had created a culture years. for 34 years. I've been in Australia. Australia. <laughs> we change it every, every what, four months? Exactly. Four months? exactly. You know, you go to work in the morning. By the time you go back home, it's a different prime minister. Yeah, yeah so we, we'd had a president for 34 years. And he also created a culture within the corporate sector that people never left their jobs. Yeah. So what that meant is if you're a, a young riser within within the corporate sector, you would never rise to the top because the people are not leaving oh, wow. those jobs. Now that created a stale and stagnant sort of economy and country, yeah. so to speak, um, in as much as um, food distribution was not um, there anymore. People were now being corrupt. Mm -hmm. um, it was just, was just not a, a good place to either raise a business or to actually grow up as a young, you know, yeah, young as a young, young person. Guy. So if you grew up in a place where you don't know what your tomorrow looks like because of the inflation, because of the political turmoil, when you come to a place of stability, you hold on to whatever you have and you don't want to let it go. Yeah, awesome. Right. That's that's what right now is, is sort of that's, that's your mentality. Absolutely. You know, I speak to a lot of people and they're like, why do you collect so many books? Because I grew up without the books. Yeah, wow. All right. I did not have books growing up. So I to, did not know that about you. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So for some people, this is a waste. But this, for me, is fulfilling that childhood need mm. of, if I had these books, I'd do better in life. Yeah. 
You know, if I had this amount, amount of stuff, I'd do better in life. But we've got a problem now. My wife thinks I'm a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you the, know, camera, the camera's in show. But there's, there's, there's a lot of <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know? So, yeah, yeah. So, so that's, that's it. Mm. It's just that, that childhood sense of lack. Yeah. Now that I have an opportunity to actually have them, mm. why not? You know, and I also want to have something that it's, I, it's something we take so much for granted. I and mean, we've got libraries everywhere. We, you know, we walk into a Dimmicks, they're still around as of 2018. And um, yeah, it, it, it's something we take for granted. But, you know, you just keep them now out of that lack. Exactly. Yeah. And because I'm afraid that maybe I'll wake up and I don't have one book that I need in order for me to, to pass my exams in school. Yeah. <laughs> so well, it's a whole different story. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. So that's why a lot of people wouldn't understand why we work as hard as we do. Because mm. um, if you don't work, you don't eat. Mm. Around here, if you don't work, there's always somebody who can give you a, a helping hand. You got a family, or you could get the government to help you out. Back home, if the government can't help itself, how are they going to help their own citizens? Mm -hmm. so exactly. You got to put in the work. So you put in the work and. And that's something you take into your business today is, is every day you'll take it as, as an opportunity, as a, a chance to put in work. And, you know, and I think, is that why you're more drawn to the entrepreneurial path? Because you can see the effort you're putting in, into an end result, into your family, into your, your work and, and you driving it, so to speak. I'd say the better way to put it is, what would have drawn me to entrepreneurship, right? Mm. So when I was growing up in Zim at that time, we had no fuel yeah. within the country. And the only way you could get fuel was people that would cross the border mm. to go to other countries, all yeah. right? So just to give you context, Sydney would have been another country, but mm. Australia is a big continent. Yeah. So people would come from Melbourne or drive all the way to Sydney, which is about eight hours, yep. and then drive back with fuel from there wow. and then sell it at, at higher prices or they would sell it to younger distributors mm. like me that would run around with 20 liter bottles yep. um, to sell to other people that were running businesses or wanted mm. the, the fuel to commute to and from work. So this was your first taste of entrepreneurship? That was the first yeah. taste of entrepreneurship, yeah. okay, where we used to sell fuel to other people that could afford it, yeah. you know? And I remember I, I would have been 15 or I was 16 and I went into a big, big brawl where a bigger kid came and stole our stash of fuel. Oh, wow. Right, and you, there's no way you could report it yeah. because it was illegal. Yeah. All right? So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. And you can see how, how tiny I was. Yeah. Um, and then all these big guys would bully us. And ever since then, I just knew that I had just had to have more just in case somebody came and took it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And with that, that's the, that's how I've just ingrained that mentality yeah. into my business that if I have five clients today and somebody comes and snatches three, mm -hmm. at least I've got two left. So I got to work twice as hard yeah. in order to get one thing that I want. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's a completely different, different mindset. mindset. <laughs> yeah. You know, always, always look for oversupply. Absolutely. Yeah. Never, then, then you never be without. Yeah. Because there's, there's a whole different mindset of somebody who's been without. Because mm. once you do have, you'd always not want to be that guy you were before. Yeah. But if you've always had and you don't know what it feels like to be without, mm. sometimes some people want to experiment yeah. <laughs> and yeah. see, uh, and see, how it, yeah. see what happens. Yeah. But they know they'll always spring back up. Yeah. Right? But if you've, if, you've, if you've lived without, you never want to go back to that. To, and that drives you. That motivates you if, if, if used correctly. If used correctly, or sometimes it could be... No, sometimes you could... You could create a story around it and oh woe is me this is where i've come from but but you've built it in a way that it, i feel like it motivates you would every, that be correct every, yeah. every single day i wake up first of all i'm surprised that kid from africa yeah. lives in a place like this yeah you know it's not much but for somebody who's lived in a mud hut for the rest of his life this is a palace, this is a palace. all right and then there's always that 
insecurity. I mean, it's, it's, it becomes to, to other people um, a bit of a cause for concern because then they're like, oh, if you're always not happy with the present and you're always scared about the future and anxious about the past, then you are not living in the now. Yeah. But if you were brought up in a place where your home could be bombed down to, to the ground and it never, it's not yours again, yeah. there, there's no sense of permanency yeah. in your life. And if you wake up every single time and it's all there, yeah. something somehow in deep inside of you is just still afraid that what if mm. somebody comes and takes something from me? So what I'm interested in then is, so you, you exit Zimbabwe, you come to Australia, completely different culture, completely different outset and, and mindset and, and completely different opportunities. What is, what is the first thing you do what, as, as someone who hasn't been brought up with books, hasn't been brought up, you know, where do you go? Do you, do you go get a job? Do you, what, what happened in that sort of two, three months that you landed in Australia? I'm, I'm really interested to find out. I'll tell you, I had $73 in my pocket. Wow. When I landed in Australia. That $73 had to stretch between accommodation and food up until I got some other. So it was literally you had to get out. Like this wasn't a plan. This was, um, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> and Australia is the place. And I've got $73 in to do Okay. So obviously the whole strategy to leave Zimbabwe was, was a long-term game. It took me four years to save enough. Yeah. for plane ticket, ticket right, yeah. and the visa yeah. requirements that were needed yeah. because um, apparently back in the time if you were going to come in on a visa I came mm. in in the time that I came to Australia you had to have 90 days worth um, of I think it was 70 no no you had to leave on $75 a day yeah. all right for 90 days you, sh you had to show the bank that kind of money yeah. all right and yeah, I worked it around with friends that bored me so that I put that money in my bank account for three months and then I showed the Australian government yeah. that I had the money and then I had to replace it back. But as soon as I landed in Australia, I had $73. Wow. And I had to look for work. I, cool. I was staying in St. Kilda there at a backpackers. Yeah. And I think I was paying $20 a night. So that would have stretched me for three Four, nights. Or six, three nights. Three nights. All right. So I paid for two. Yeah. And then the rest I ate. Yeah. All right, and then I went out and started looking for work. Mm -hmm. On the third day, I got a job call uh, from the restaurant uh, that then, you know, sort of became the springboard of my career. Okay. So I was working in a restaurant washing dishes. Yeah. And I think I was earning $21 an hour. Yeah. Okay. Decent for washing dishes. That, that would have been decent, yeah. really. Um, so that $21 carried me through, I think I worked there for about three months up until I realized they did not have a Facebook account. There we go. All right. And I'm like, how come people, you know, where do people check in in this restaurant and stuff like that? And I created one for, yeah. out of fun. Yeah. And the only people that were following that Facebook page were the people that were working in that res restaurant. Happens about one day on a Wednesday afternoon, I remember this. My boss came in, he's Italian. He's like, who did this? Who did this internet? Wow. And I'm like, oh, snap. Something is broken. What has happened? And I was like, yeah, I created the page. Don't do this without my permission. Oh, wow. You know? And he's like, take it off. Take it off. Because apparently he had heard that people can write reviews. But nothing oh, had happened. Yeah. All right? And um, all of a sudden, in the week that came after people actually started writing really good reviews. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, come here, stop the dishes, do the internet. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, it's just, this is your first taste of This has just been dawned on me, right? I know not a lot about um, Facebook and, and how it actually works. I just know how to put up a status. So um, yeah, and that was the transition from working from the kitchen yeah. to being put in the office to actually start managing the whole internet affairs. Yeah, wow. And one of these days, I think after about six or so months while I was, you know, learning and I started learning all I could, you know, going, going on to courses online and buying all these products and learning how to actually Facebook, yeah. you know, cause a lot of people <laughs> are on Facebook, but no, not no, a lot no, of people Facebook. can Facebook. That's it. All right. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. So I, um, yeah. So that then became my, 
foundation mm -hmm. and he started bragging about what I was doing right, right to his other restaurant mates right. and then one guy actually came to me and is like I'll pay you $250 a week okay. yeah so I'm like oh wait a minute I can actually be paid Thank to be on this. Facebook yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> Yes, the dream. <laughs> you know, dream. I'm like fun boy from Zimbabwe. Now I'm, you know, getting paid to tweet. Yeah. <laughs> what to I, like, comment, and share. I had the same experience. I walked into a um, bookshop, second hand bookshop, this old lady. Had, I was like, What are you doing with your socials? And she's like, Oh, I did AdWords. I was like, Why? Why are you doing AdWords? You're a right. bookshop. Yeah. Second hand books, you're going to compete against Dimmix and all the others. Right. And there was someone talking into her. I, I got angry. I was like, You know, you shouldn't have been bamboozled into that. But she's like, oh, I, I want to look at Facebook. I do this whole talk. And then she gives me $100. And I go, hang on, you've just given me money. Money. To talk about Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> like it's... Yeah. You, you, wouldn't think team, you think it's quite ridiculous because now businesses are finally trying to see that it's a Facebook strategy. But even more so back then when you did the restaurant thing, that would have been even more ridiculous. That, yeah, I, I, I would have never fathomed that somebody would want to pay money to to be on facebook and that's when my because now i'm being paid for it yeah i needed to learn a whole lot more yeah and my quest for wanting to learn more um got me into studying right which which i never really it never was a thing yeah, for me it goes back to now now an appreciation of study absolutely because, because you know yeah now you have the books you have the resources you have the internet you have all this stuff that you didn't have in Zimbabwe that I think would have made given you such an advantage over other people who were like, oh, I need to, I know I need to learn Facebook ads, but then wouldn't go and they'd be like, I need to do this, I need to, do it, I'll do it tomorrow. But I think you would have been like, great, I can go and learn how to do Facebook. Ads. How to do that exactly? Yeah. And you did mention earlier on how um, I also dabbled into modeling. All right <clears throat> up until I even wanted to create a business around it mm. and what I was doing back then in retrospect that was influencer marketing yep at its core at its core when you were doing the modeling or the restaurant no no when I was doing the the, the, the modeling yeah I did not realize they now call it influencer marketing yeah, on Instagram with yeah 2,000 followers can call themselves an absolutely account. you know yeah. so that's when I went into modeling and I was representing businesses and a lot of my friends were like oh my god where did you buy this from what did you how did you do that or i was actually influencing people that were that's following. a funny question when you go get how did you do that right yeah. and 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 now they call it a thing but back in the time when i did it nobody knew what it was yeah all right and the fact that i kept representing all these brands i also noticed that they were not doing anything with the photos that were taking off me. Oh, really? They were just taking them? They were just taking them and then hoping that somebody would just come and see them on their Facebook and not marketing them. And then from then on, that's when I realized there is yet another layer yeah. of work that needs to be done to all these businesses that are not marketing themselves. Yeah. Well, I wanted them to share my photo. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, the, I wanted so, them to make the yeah. yeah. You know, but, then, but yeah. then I realized it's, it's, a business, it's a business behind that. And, and me getting in touch with the art department was not any far off from knowing the CEO of the company. Yeah. And then telling CEO of the company that use me in your photos because I will actually make you more money. More money. That's the bottom line to it. So that's then how I integrated both of these things. You know, the whole modeling now became the whole digital agency. Yeah. Because it morphed into one thing, so from right, yeah, and then now I started working and and actually helping more and bigger businesses, yeah, so that they could actually start scaling goal a business that's profitable and enjoyable, well. and that that's a lot of fun. I want to talk about you said there would have been a point in time where you got married at the same time, you had a children, a child, um, and you started a business. So, what time frame are we talking weeks within those <laughs> are we talking months all right so to be really really um you know i was married on the 4th of january yeah all right good month and our little girl was born on the 6th of january that's amazing all yeah. right <laughs> so so that's were you worried that the um is, oh was it a year in between or oh no no, no. the same year same year yeah 
Oh, I'm the same yeah. I was married on the fourth. Your wife could have given birth on your wedding day. <laughs> no, because no. it was it was all planned. Science, think, it was yeah. all planned. Yeah. Okay. So on the fourth of January, that's when we got married. Yeah. On the sixth, we were already in hospital expecting our little girl. That's the the thing is because I've just come in to Australia. All right. And when we sort of connected, me and my wife, we had sort of spent three years knowing each other and then she fell pregnant. And yeah. culturally, it wouldn't be accepted that yeah. we um, have a child out of wedlock. Yeah, right. So we had to instantly yeah. fast track the, yeah. the, the wedding. And we calculated when the, um, when the, um, the baby was due and then we had to make sure we were getting married earlier. Yeah. Because this was January, so December, January, the vets and registers of yeah. marriages, they're all closed. closed Nobody early. wants to do anything. The first date we got was the fourth. fourth. So that just worked out. So I, I was a husband and a dad yeah. in the same week. Yeah. All right. Wow. And then pretty much after that, I was looking after both my girls. Um, I gave up doing whatever I was doing yeah. work-wise. And I went on and started my, my yeah. business. So, so what I'm interested in, and I hear it a lot with, from entrepreneurs and people I follow and, and people I talk to, is that instance of having a child is very motivating in terms of what am I doing with my life? Take a step back. Now I've got someone to provide for. How does that influence the decision of starting a business? And is it a positive influence, do you feel? I think people are different. Um, I was a mess. Right. I, I didn't know what was going on. So much was happening. I like that you can admit that. Yeah, no, I was yeah. a total mess. Yeah. Like, like I was just, I, nothing was planned. I was responding yeah. to life. I was not being, um, you know, I was reacting. Everything was just whacking them all. Yeah. And it just then so happened that it fell into place. Mm. All right. Without my active saying that uh, I'm doing this and I'm hoping this would stick. Mm. All right. Um, my not going to work was purely out of the fact that nobody else was going to look after my wife and my daughter. She just had a cesarean. Right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And then yeah. there's, there's so no way that I was going to unite five guys. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I wasn't concentrating at work and, and it wasn't really helping anyone. Yeah. that I was there, if I was operating machinery or if it, if it was a job that involved machinery, because yeah. I was just afraid that something would happen at home and I wasn't yeah. all together. So yeah, I just, you know, quit that job. I came back home and then I was looking at my girls and, and then I was like, okay, what are we going to do now? Mm. And that's when I set in and I was like, okay, I've been given an opportunity by these people to work on their Facebooks and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Why don't I just keep doing that? Yeah. Looking at my little girl, I've got photos of me, her crying, me crying on the phone, but I'm on the phone trying to get business. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and my yeah, wife wow. came and took photos. Doing, of, doing hard yeah, stuff. exactly. Yeah, and then there's the my old desk where we had the baby um, sitting on there, and I had the one computer before I had the two screens, <laughs> you know? Yeah. My little girl is sitting there, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm just typing away, oh, yeah. and I didn't even know what was going on. Nice. There are loads of photos of me. So you're building on, and you're building something. We just kept building. And now my little girl actually reminds me of who I was when I was a kid. And I want to get her what I thought I would have wanted. Yeah. So now that keeps. Yeah, that, that keeps instilling. Absolutely. Energy. You know what I mean? And and I, I never want that she, not that I'm spoiling her, yeah. but I never want that she asks for anything. And, I'm, and I know I can't. Yeah. I want to tell her we cannot because she can wait because we are. Um, that's, that's a lesson and that's discipline, but I don't want to be able not to afford it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you you yeah. know what I mean? I know the, I know the difference. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, when Christmas rolls around, you know, you can, you can be like, yeah, okay, you want a, you want a Barbie doll playhouse. I don't know. Absolutely. Yeah, whatever kids want these kids days. Want this I days. want to be yeah. able to afford it, yeah. but I want discipline um, enough for her yeah. to to say you can wait or would you, you earn it would would you instill sort of entrepreneurial disciplines within her you know say she wants you know and this is i don't know how old's your daughter now she's three she's, she's a three major so, so three going three on 
<laughs> so, so you know, as she gets older, you know, sort of six, ten, fifteen, as as she sort of wants things, you know, she might want a want a handbag or a, a phone, or it's it's the question of not um, how can I, or well, I want it, and this it's more to more how can I afford it, not you know, why you know. So you're going to try and instill the good old sell lemonade. I don't see any people selling lemonade in Australia, but do you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. so she at some point actually earned more money than I did in that week. Okay. She was in a Bonds commercial and she got paid a bundle, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then I was like, okay, since you oh, are... How can we use this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> since you are earning more money than I am, maybe I should just start charging rent, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or board or, yeah. or board or whatever it is but um okay so there's talk yeah there's talk about leaving your kids a million dollars there's you know when, when property, property investment, investment yeah. and stuff like that um every single day we try and put a dollar away mm -hmm. in a big big jar of, one dollar yeah, yeah just just one dollar away i'll i'll show you the big jar yeah i'd love to see it uh, <laughs> I like that. It's a massive shivers wiggle. Did you drink the shivers wiggle? <laughs> no, I got this. I got this off of a. Uh, this podcast friend. is not sponsored by shivers wiggle. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> yeah. So I um. Yeah. I we put a dollar in yeah. there yeah. every single day. See, I actually cut it off, and she we we have called it saving. Cool. Yeah, Kalia, have you saved money? Yeah. So she knows naturally that every single day I have to do that. Yeah. So that's part of us teaching her that you got to put something away all the time. Mm. Okay. Um, she earns her treats yep. after she's done something, either she's picked up her clothes or she's um, um, cleaned or helped mom to clean the house. Yep. She earns a treat. Yep. So you work, you get paid for someone else. Yep. And I think in the meantime, when 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 all is happening, I'll be replacing whatever is in there with real money yeah. and putting it away, yeah. either into an index fund or yeah. some some bond or something that she can pick up on her eighteenth birthday. That's perfect. Yeah. All right. And this will be the um, real aspect of the money is actually being placed in a, yeah. and she she calls it saving. Yeah. So and this is at three years old. She's three years old. This is you teaching her for your how to save money. <laughs> That's amazing. I don't, I've I've never heard it. Admittedly, I don't talk to a lot of parents, but right. I've never. Um, that's that's an amazing thing. I think a lot of people should should take under consideration. Well, it depends on how people want to yeah. uh, raise their own kids, but that's oh, how that's I'm true. doing it. And she's got a own shelf. Oh of, yeah, of books. Yep. Yeah. Um, chicken soul for whatever uh, five soup. languages of love yeah. of children yeah uh, rich dad poor dad for teens, for teens. Yeah, you'll give that to um her. strategy for bringing teens and parents together so yeah i think I'm when we are at a level uh, think positive for kids um 21 21 day challenge that's how you yeah. save money for for 21 days so yeah um, I feel like when she gets to an age where she's reading and we, we're playing around together, um, she can read a section and then yeah. we talk about that. I want her to be able to experience um, both sides of mm. not having and also having because yeah. she's going to be brought yeah. up in, in a scenario where she has it she all. She has it all, yeah. Right? And be love and absolutely. Yeah. But I also want her to actually learn mm as she grows. So this is why we've got all the yeah. um, things going on and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. um, yeah that's, that's incredible. That's, um, I, I like that. That'll make a really good bit. Um, I want to talk about your passion for marketing because it's, it's, it's coming in a fair lot and I see a lot of your videos and talking about it. Um, for me, what I love about marketing is, is the attention the zero to three seconds of how you get that attention, placing a message that speaks to the right person and using that to create a desired response. That fascinates me and then there's a level of that. But for you, what would it be about marketing in particular that, that it has attracted you to it and has made you form a company around it and, and everything? What do you think has been that aspect? For uh, 
Absolutely. Um, I've got a, I've got one or three, three words to that. Yeah. We're here to live, we're here to learn, and we're here to contribute. Okay. All right. And in the leaving aspect, all right, it is through marketing that you know what a good life well spent is. Mm. All right. Um, in the learning aspect, it is through marketing that people that have a message can actually deliver it to an audience that would then help them have a happier existence. Yeah. I'm motivated. We're here to live, we're here to learn, we're here to contribute. And when you learn things or mistakes or experiences from other people, then you get to have a happier existence. Yeah. And everybody always wants to contribute to a better world. Oh my God, I want to change the world. I want to make, I want to help, I help people. Yeah. I want to make it yeah. as easy for other people to exist as possible. And it's through marketing mm -hmm. that that is possible. Yeah. When you see World Vision saying, sponsor a child, it's all marketing yeah. to get you to help somebody else who can't help themselves. Yeah. So who am I to stop any of that from happening? Yeah. If I've got the opportunity to bring out that message yeah. to the world and help somebody have a meal, have shelter, if I can help a big company to create a, 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 a product that would help you make money, who am I to stop that happening yeah. in, in your existence? Yeah. Who am I to stop um, a school for marketing to get more kids to go and get more education? Yeah. Who am I? So when I ask myself that question, I will just see myself as small, yeah. as a raindrop in a thunderstorm. Like and then when you don't, go out and, 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 and explore what else is possible and how else you can contribute mm. and you're as good as dead. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So marketing <laughs> is... That's awesome. <laughs> so marketing <laughs> is, is that you're love and guy. appreciation. Yeah. 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 That you give to anything in, in the world. And um, if you ride a bicycle or, or if you have any sort of possession or any piece of property, if you don't touch it or if you don't do anything to it, mm. it dies yeah. or it gathers dust. Yeah. Or your product can be as amazing as possible and do all these things. But if you can't communicate if you, it, exactly. where are you? Yeah. yeah. All right. So then comes people like you and me mm. and then brings that product to life. Yeah. And then we then enhance other people's existence. Yeah. So that's, that's just what we're doing. It's not Facebook ads or no. SEO or whatever. We haven't even touched that. No. Those are just, you know, means to an yeah. end. Yeah. What we're doing is enhancing the livelihood of humans. Yeah. Entrepreneurs are out there creating. Yeah. They created that chair. They created that phone you're listening to this podcast phone. from, this yeah. microphone. Or the if, platform or the Spotify or the shop. Exactly. Or, yeah, or the so if, SoundCloud, whatever. Yeah. So if somebody like me, who's a marketer, did not help them amplify that message, mm. none of this would be existing. Yeah. And, you know, someone needs to hear a lot of what you've said through these podcasts. You know, maybe they're listening to it on Stitcher because someone created that. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, another thing I want to touch on is, you know, you've got a lot of experience and, and a lot of knowledge and you've lived through a lot. If you had a, a room of 20 year olds or something, 18, 20 year olds, and, and you're talking to them just as they're about to graduate, what, what advice would you give to them, even entrepreneurial or, or, or whatever, that would give them a real kick up the butt and go, okay, A, I've got time, but B, I need to do something with it. Do you, do you have, a, do you have a, some thoughts around that? You see, the thing is, everybody thinks we're all cut from the same cloth. Right. Even if you put out your finger like this, no fingers on the same hand are the same height. No. All right? So each and every one of us is endowed with unique gifts and special talents that we have. My advice to anyone who is 20 years old, I'll be like, seek you first. Seek what it is that you can bring to the universe and help other people have, be, do, and have a happier existence. Mm. And once you find that thing, shout from every top of the roof to make sure that people have that talent. Yeah. Because if you go on and want to latch on to what other people have done, that might not be your thing. No. 
And before you know it, you 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 exhaust yourself. Yeah. You burn yourself out because you're trying to feed into a cult that's not meant for you. Mm. So when you find out who you are, right, then the world will take shape. Yeah. And does it matter how long that takes? Because some people might be sitting here at 25 going, I haven't figured it out. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm in my second year of a master's degree or I'm working a job that I don't like, but I'm doing it because the system told me to. Yeah. Ken Old Sanders, I don't know what his name was. He started his KFC yeah, at yeah, 75. Yeah. Um, uh, who else? Donald Trump. Donald Trump would have 70 said, and he's the president. 70 and now he's Love got, him or hate him. Yeah. Exactly. He's gotten his, his dream. Um, some people think everything is linear, that you grow up and you, you know, you, you go to kindergarten, you go to high school and then you get engaged, you get married, and then you have 2.4 kids, and then... 2.4 <laughs> 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 You get a job, and then you retire. People think it's linear. Yeah. But everybody else has dealt a different card at a different time mm -hmm. within their own existence. Yeah. All right? So wait for it to come. Listen for the answers because half of the time you notice that when you're doing what you're absolutely supposed to be doing it doesn't feel like work mm. right now tim i don't want to lie to you i'm working right now because yeah. somebody's yeah. going to listen to this podcast all right somebody's going to watch this video yeah and seek me out yeah and find out what it is I, that i'm so. i'm doing yeah. and in the process they now find the body of work that i've done yeah they better pack a lunch. <laughs> I'll be there, there it. for a while. Yeah. All right? And when you start doing things that, are, that you absolutely love, mm -hmm. because it's coming from your core. Yeah. And people read that. You know? People will feel that more than, you know. Then you're, you're trying to, to be an imposter in something that you're not. Yeah. So the, the, the thing is, Hollywood has messed up people's brains. Oh, yeah. Okay? You see an episode where somebody's born, they go to kindergarten, they go to high school, they go to university, and they um, get married, they get a job, they get promoted, they buy a house, they buy a car, and then they buy, they go to retirement, and then they die. All in a space of 30 minutes plus commercials. All right? So when you start looking at, when you start looking at things like that, all right, all in a space of 30 minutes and commercials. Yeah. Hollywood has frustrated what people now anticipate. Mm. And people now have um, a problem with instant gratification. Yeah. Patience. Yeah. It takes 21 years to be 21 years old. Right. All right? You'll live so, other lifetimes. Yes. So if you rush things, all right, it's like rushing through um, in life. When you're driving, you can't just go through a red light. Right. If the red light is there, you stop because there's cars coming in. If you go in through there what happens you get hit you get hit because everybody else is is has, has waiting their turn and now their turn has come and then they're going yeah. so when when you hit a, a a roadblock in life or if you if you want to do things so fast sometimes you got to learn a few lessons so that you appreciate where you've been and what you're going through yeah all right and then you would be allowed to go to the next level. Yeah. If you play video games, every level has its own levels, mm. all right? But other people want to uh, just go zip through and mm. go to the next level. Then what's the whole point? Yeah, point. You know, and you, you, in a video game sense, you know, you'll, you'll die and you'll get hit and you'll get pushed down, but you'll learn through that experience that, oh, there's a guy around the corner, so I'm gonna have to sneak around this corner and, and get him that way. It's the same in life and in business, I'm sure. You'll make a mistake. You know, you'll, you'll, we're even talking about it. Um, you know, you might take on a client that you're like, oh, I'm not too sure about it. There's a couple of red flags here. Right. You send the invoice, they don't pay. You know, but you learn those lessons. You learn, you learn that. And, um, you live and learn. And, and like I said, you're here to live, you're here to learn, and you're here to contribute. A lot of our lives, what we're doing is learning. Yeah. All right. And when we've learned, we learn from our own experiences or we learn from other people's experiences. Mm. That's when we get to live. And then we get fulfilled by contributing. Yeah. Because if you're not giving, like right now, you're giving off of your time, you, you drove all the way here, because you know this will be 
something that you would say, I have given this yeah. my time. We've frozen our time. Mm. This day, um, we, we, we've, we've, we've recorded a piece of today. Yeah. Now we, this, we're going to throw it in the universe. See what happens. See what happens. Yeah. All right. You've contributed. Mm. You know, obviously you feel good about it, even if you're not getting paid for this or nobody is, but we know we've done something mm. and somebody somewhere is going to pick this up and do something with it. I hope so. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, if you give it a good intention. If you listen to this, do something. <laughs> Whatever it is you want to do. Do it. Just, do, do, it. It. just <laughs> do it. That's the other thing. No, Mikey Gobb is right. Mm. Very right. He's just do it. Absolutely. You know, and I think that's a lesson that I learned from you on a constant basis is, you know, you got married, you had a kid, and then you went, I need to start a business. And you went and did it. You just did it. Well, you learned it, along the way. And you, bought, <laughs> you bought books and you studied and you, you took gratitude and perspective into, into account and just did. And that's, that's awesome. That's well, awesome. thank you, man. And I, I, I think that's, that's a really cool cool place to end it but before i do anybody that's listening to this and, and wants to reach out to prosper in terms of business in terms of knowledge and, and this content where can we find you on, on on a number of platforms and is there anywhere specifically you want people to reach out to these days i'm just operating off off okay so if i would say a facebook uh, profile that's that's where i'm operating from that's my living room yep. um and then from then on it will tell you which which place you want to go to either instagram or either linkedin but if you look me up on on uh, facebook prosper tabalinga then you spell that for everyone too oh, absolutely yeah. p-r-o-s-p-e-r I think I'm the only prosper that actually warrants to be followed. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Go and test it out. Go and punch yeah, it. Just reference. type in prosper um, Melbourne or prosper digital marketing. I think yeah. I've, I've done up. enough to have earned yeah. being called prosper, just like opera, yeah. you know? Uh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, yeah. well, prosper, this has been prosper. I'm Tim. We've been talking. Thank you and, so um, much, man. Yeah. No, thank you for your time. Absolutely. Thank you.